On the stand today, we have a 915 transmission that was recently overhauled. A uh, customer came in and was said he was experiencing some issues going into first gear when the car was still moving, and second gear change felt a little weird to him as well. When we test drove the car, uh, first gear would not engage at all if the car was moving. If I pulled up to a stoplight or a stop sign, put the car in neutral, put my foot on the clutch, it would go into first, no problems, but if the car was moving, it would definitely grind. No way it would it go in. Second gear would grind on upshift when the transmission was cold. As it warmed up, it seemed to get a little bit better. And another issue that the customer didn't complain about was in fourth gear, I noticed that there was a noise coming from the gear shift that it felt like the gear shift was rubbing against another gear. When we got back to the shop, we drained the transmission oil, took a look at the fill plug uh, and the drain plug on the magnet side of things was not a lot of steel uh, indicating that it had a lot of metal or metal con uh, contact, but the oil did show a fairly heavy concentration of brass. So today we're gonna tear the transmission down. We've got it on our stand. Obviously it's out of the car and we'll see what we can find. That doesn't look so good. That hasn't been rebuilt. No way would it have that much debris. That's been cleaned. No, no gasket though, they've just glued it on. There's no, no dog teeth left. So that asymmetric gear is done. Um, synchro looks like it's just old. Second gear synchro looks a little bit better, but still showing some signs of wear. Right there, it's polished off pretty good. Second gear, second gear dog teeth are done. Third and oh, fourth gear is synchro is definitely done. Third gear synchro is average. Let me just go flip it over to see the selector for. Looks like they didn't do any of the bearings back here. Doesn't look real horrible. So fourth gear would be like that. I would say this has not been rebuilt before. This is just a used transmission. Fancy limited slip differential. Okay, I just pulled the pinion shims off. I got two shims there, I'll clean them up and measure them. Nothing else stuck. The uh, pinion shaft bearing doesn't look horrible. Definitely uh, seen some miles. Same for the input shaft bearing race. No obvious damage, but definitely showing signs of wear. All right, so we've got everything out and on the bench, and this transmission looks like it hasn't been touched in well over 100,000 miles. We've spoken to the owner, and he's given us an approval. We're gonna go ahead and make this like it was new. That means it's gonna get new synchros on all gears. First, second, third, and fourth are gonna get new dog teeth. 
Uh, first and s first, second and third, fourth sliders are also going to be replaced. And we'll go through and make sure the diff set up correctly with preloads and the pinion setup is correct as well. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and clean everything. We've got all our parts on order. They should be here in a few days. And we're just going to keep moving forward. You can see that have used some kind of uh, silicone sealer here. So it's going to take a little bit more work to clean those gasket surfaces. So we've got all of the uh, transmission parts cleaned up. Here's my input shaft, differential. I did not disassemble the differential, so it's just had an exterior clean. I uh, do have to fix one of the speedometer magnets where it has fallen out. Luckily it was stuck to the differential right there. Input shaft all cleaned up. If we take a look at our teeth, I don't know if we can zoom in there. These are pretty heavily worn and rounded off. Uh, this is fourth gear and these should be nice and sharp and you can see they're very rounded off. Same with uh, first and second. In fact, second gear has completely lost one of its dogs. Very rounded off to give you an idea of what it should look like. There's the new teeth that we're going to put on and you can see the old ones, I mean especially with one broken off. This is our fifth gear and reverse gear. Everything's not too bad here. Uh, sliders in good shape, teeth are in good shape, reverse sliders in good shape. Fifth gear itself, uh, teeth are in good shape. Synchro is showing some signs of wear, not super horrible. Just going to put a new synchro band on this one and keep the dog teeth. Here we have all of our selectors. I've uh, cleaned up our forks. Uh, our third and fourth did show very minor wear, but still well within the usable tolerance. I suspect our vibration that I was feeling in driving was this. Uh, this one was adjusted further back than it should have been. This transmission has been apart once before. Could tell that by the silicone that was added to the gaskets. This is all of our old parts. Uh, clutch release fork we can see has got some fairly substantial wear right there then these are all of our bearings right here first second synchro bands the old pinion nut not pinion nut input shaft nut so this is the slider for third and fourth gear also showing very quite a bit of wear on those teeth right there so we're putting new sliders in same with our first second slider right there where was not super horrible on this one still showing some signs where it's knocked that sharp edge off so we're putting a new slider in there then if we move down to our cases these have all been vapor blasted and been through our polisher they still need a final clean and a scrape over but we can see a lot better looking than when they uh, started off and you can see I got little pieces here this will get a final detail once it's ready for reassembly when I start putting bearings back into it the uh, main case very hard to clean in all these little spots here usually I'll come in with a little bit of brake clean and a little tiny wire brush scrub all that out get these ready for new bearings going back here. intermediate housing same thing on this one just because it was so dirty inside I did pull all the detent system out. This is the reverse gear lockout and detent. This is held in with two roll pins right here, spring and a little piston in here. Normally I'll just clean around that, but because these uh, this transmission had been done before, they had applied like a silicone to all the gasket surfaces that we could not scrape off. So it went through the vapor blaster and the polisher, which turned out pretty nice to clean it but you've got to have everything out of the case to do that whenever you go into a sandblaster of any type. So there's all of our pieces cleaned up. We've been able to have a good final inspection. One last thing, since we had them out, we did go ahead and replayed a couple of pieces. These are the detent plugs that I pulled out of the case as well as the pivot hardware and pivot shaft for the throttles. That way this will give it a little bit more protection and we're going to use all new hardware when it goes back together. 
But basically now, after several hours of cleaning, we're ready to start reassembling everything. I've got the diff in the housing. I just want to check the bearing preloads. Uh, in this particular one, the diff had been changed and the bearings were new. So I just want to see roughly where we're at to see if I need to make any changes. So I'm um, torqued my side cover down with just a few bolts and I'm just going to measure the running torque. And we're looking for as a bare bones minimum like 26 inch pounds. Looks like we're running right around 20 right now. Or if you want it in newtons, it's running around two newton meters. So normally what we're looking for on a new bearing is something up around here uh, to probably here, depending on what brand of bearings. Different bearings run different preloads. But what it means is I'm going to have to pull the side bearings off, see what a S1 and S2 shim totals are, and just start from scratch. All right, so we're putting the 915 back together. I've got my, just my pinion shaft installed. The nut is on. You'll see that I've got my uh, sliding hub back here, but I don't have fifth gear or any of the other parts here. This has to be tightened. It's 250 Newton meters is the tightening torque on this. That cinches everything down on the shaft and seats everything. Then I've got my retaining plate in here holding my main bearing. I've got new bearings on both the pinion, on the very front pinion and the annular bearing. This is the bearing that supports the depth. I've set up my uh, depth measurement tool. The spec on this one is 66.3 plus the deviation R. Deviation R on this one is 0 0.30. So we're looking for 66.60. And all I've got to do now is just drop on my diff side cover plate and measure the pinion depth. So I've got my pinion depth measuring tool in and looks like the pinion is about 0.25 of a millimeter, 0.26 deep. So we can't buy a 0.26 shim, but we can buy a 0.25 shim. So we'll order up a uh, shim and add that to our shim pack right here and continue on. So I've just added a 0.25 shim pack. The way I get there is uh, the available shims are 0 0.1, 0 0.15, and 0.2. So I installed a 0.1 and a 0.15 shim, bringing me up to 0.25. I am on right now plus 0.1 of a millimeter. Porsche allows us to be plus or minus 0 0.03 of a millimeter. And I'm going to carefully bring this off just to show you as I come back out. So you see it's going down as I twist the bar around, as I come up. comes up and then starts to come back down. So I'm right on that plus 0 0.01 of a millimeter. So my pinion depth is set and I can move forward. Uh, getting next step is I will get the uh, gears into the case and check my backlash because I need to be able to lock up my pinion shaft to be able to do backlash. All right, gear sets are in, nuts torqued, shift interlock reinstalled between here, freshly plated plug installed. These are in and torque to specifications. Everything's adjusted. This is my adjustment plate that holds the shift forks in the right place, locates off the bearings. And now I'm ready to put the intermediate part of the case back on. Okay, so we've got our uh, diff back into the housing and our dial gauge on it. So I'm just gonna be checking our backlash. Normally we wanna check this in four different places, but our backlash is so huge at this point, there's no point. We're moving about 0.56 roughly when it should be optimum for this one engraved on the ring was 0.16. So I'm going to have to pull both sides of the diff bearings off, see what shims are in there and recalculate. So the tool I'm using here is in the 911 Carrera shop manual and there's the dimensions and instructions on how to make it. What it does is it locks up the pinion shaft so I can check my backlash and you take this tool, it slides in on fifth gear, make sure fifth gear is selected, just a little bit of up pressure to stop it moving and then I can check my backlash. So my optimum backlash on this one is 0.16 of a millimeter as inscribed on the uh, differential 
and for a diff that was recently set up, this thing was a mess. Bearings had been loctited on, I had to cut one bearing off and re-shim. The preload was incorrect and the backlash was really incorrect. So I've got it all back where it needs to be, got our preload where we need to be, and now we're ready to go ahead and reassemble the entire transmission. All right, so now I'm finished with my differential settings. I'm going to put all of the back end of my transmission back together. I've got my reverse gears in, my reverse shaft in, new O-ring on, installed. Uh, Retorqued all the nuts, everything's back up to spec. Shift fork is on and adjusted so it's just sitting off the synchro. We also want to make sure that you have good clearance here on the reverse idler gear as well. If they rattle it can hit. And we're ready to put the end cover on. I've got the diff, now we've got all the shims sorted out, I'm going to install it next. I've just got it out so I can put my seals into the case and the cover and we'll get all this closed up and ready to go back into the car. All right, so I've got the transmission back onto the engine and we're gonna go put it back into the car. Now we have an extensive how-to video on this subject. If you wanna know how to put the engine and transmission back in, I suggest you go watch it. We'll put a link in the description below. But for now, we're just gonna get it back in and get everything hooked up so we can test drive this. So we're ready for our first test drive on our transmission. Everything's back in. I've heated the car up in the shop and set the oil level and set the clutch adjustment. It feels nice and smooth, ready to go. We also had the speedometer out of this car, uh, had it cleaned, new piece of glass put on it, the trip meter wasn't working, and also because this speedometer was out of another car as a replacement, we had it reset to his current mileage, which was 89,000, and so we have uh, gonna be looking for its operation when we road test as well. With the transmission, the first few shifts on a brand new transmission can be a little stiff and that's because we've got new sliders, new synchros, new dog teeth and it takes a little bit of time for them to wear in. Typically I'd say the first 20 to 25 miles the transmission is going to settle in and the shift is going to progressively get better until it works into its normal service. So what I'm looking for is making sure that I can get all of the gears. Uh, I've already done it on the, on the lift with the engine running, the wheels turning, made sure I could get all six gears, five forward, one, rever one reverse. Had no problems on the lift, so now we're going to go drive it.
because of the dirt road is in really bad shape until we hit the asphalt we're probably not going to see more than second gear for right now this car before whenever you were coming back down to first any movement in the car and you could not select first gear so I'm just going to do a quick downshift here so still moving doing about 10 miles an hour clutch in into first no problems no grinding nice and smooth first back into second feels, feels good no issues so we're just going to get through the dirt here and hit the asphalt Yep, we're in third gear right now, cruising along. This is still a pretty low speed limit area, so I'm not going to really work through all the gears. It also gives me a chance to work them up and down because the synchros need to bed in, as I said before, and it takes anywhere between 20 to 40 miles for them to really settle down. No problems first and second downshifts, no issues there. Transmission's nice and quiet. Third gear. And we've got fourth gear, no issues. into third nice and smooth third into second nice and smooth first gear feels good so we're up in fifth gear right now everything's moving nice and smoothly shift up was good so one of the things that I'm looking for on a road test is not only that the gear shift goes in both on upshift and downshift but also on acceleration so if I ease on the throttle and then back off the throttle I want to make sure it doesn't pop out of gear or do anything like that so those are some of the things that I'm looking for while I'm driving the car so far we're at about 19 miles on this transmission everything's feeling pretty good we're pretty happy with everything uh, gonna take it back to the shop in a little bit lift it back up check the car over for leaks make sure everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing uh, probably give it another test drive clean it and have it ready to go back to the owner Well, that's it for our road test and checking of our transmission. I'm going to lift the car up one more time, make sure I don't have any oil leaks, do a final check of the clutch adjustment. Everything came up really nice on this one. Uh, no major problems, no major issues. Everything feels good.